In the village of Amatenango, in southern Mexico, a Zotzile Indian woman begins work on a water jar. The Zotziles have been making pottery in this way for hundreds of years. When the jar is finished, it will be useful for storing water, for cooking and drinking. It will have beauty too. For it is important to the people of Mexico that things used in everyday life be pleasing. Though jars very much like this one have been found in ruins dating back to times before Columbus discovered America, this jar will have its own individuality. It will be just a little different than every other water jar in the world. From villages all over Mexico today come the handicrafts, which have made this mountain country so famous as the land of arts and crafts. Into the markets of the towns and cities flow the products of a people who for centuries have been craftsmen and who still keep alive the ancient handicrafts because they are still useful and still beautiful. Since most of the people of Mexico are either Indian or Spanish, or a mixture of the two, their arts and crafts naturally reflect both Indian and Spanish influences. Each region of the country provides its own specialty. Baskets from one place, serapes from another. One can usually tell where a piece of pottery comes from by its characteristic color and pattern. The glowing black ware is made in the little village of Coyotepec. The Senora Rosa is famed as the best potter in the region. After forming, the clay is allowed to dry slowly in the house where it is cool. After several days, a design is scratched on the surface. Now the pieces are ready for the kiln where they will be fired in the ground at low temperatures for several more days. It is part of the potter's art to know how long and at what temperatures to fire the clay. The
pieces of broken pottery which cover the kiln are taken away and the warm black ware is removed. A little polishing, and the work is finished. Blackware is never painted or glazed. The great amount of lead oxide found in the clays of this region produced the mellow black metallic tone. Very different from this pottery, made according to ancient Indian methods and designs, is the brilliant Talavera ware, made in the city of Puebla since the 16th century by families like the Aguilars, descendants of potters from the city of Talavera in Spain, who settled here soon after the Spanish conquest of Mexico. Talavera takes much longer to make than ordinary pottery, and each step in the process is performed today almost exactly as it was 400 years ago. Talavera ware is formed on a potter's wheel, first introduced to Mexico by the Spanish. It is made from a careful blend of three different kinds of clay, all found near this city of Puebla and very closely resembling those clays found in Talavera, Spain. Talavera ware, expensive, difficult to make, and very Spanish, is not at all like the pottery produced in the little village of Tonala. This pottery has become perhaps the most typically Mexican. Many of the people who live in Tonala are potters and the children grow in an atmosphere where pottery making is as natural as eating. The designs are Indian, and the same ones are used again and again. There are almost as many different kinds of pottery made as there are pottery making villages. But pottery making is only one of the many arts and crafts of Mexico. From the Zapotec Indians in the village of Teotitlan come some of the finest serapes. Woven from pure wool, some are used for bed covers, some for rugs, and village men wear serapes as cloaks. The Garcia family earn their livelihood making serapes. All of the work, from shearing the sheep to the finished serape, is done by the family. The wool is first sorted and washed.
carding comes next to separate the fibers. Now to the spinning wheel to transform the wool into yarn. From the bobbin, the wool is wound into long loops or skeins, ready for dyeing. The strong upright loom on which the sarape is woven was brought to Mexico by the Spaniards, who also introduced wool itself. Until the coming of the Spanish conquerors, there were no sheep in Mexico, no wool, no serapes. But the Indians soon learned the use of wool and began making serapes of marvelous variety, each tribe according to its own tastes. The reboso, the shawl which Mexican women wear, was introduced by the Spanish and the art of making really fine rebosos is encouraged by the government in special schools like this, set up to help keep alive these arts, which are so much a part of Mexican culture. Nowhere else in the world do village handicrafts flourish as they do in Mexico. There can be many reasons why, but most important, the people of Mexico have always been craftsmen. Handicrafts are the custom, and the people enjoy making useful and beautiful things with their hands.